coming back to the clinic and again starting with a new uh, jacket, new enthusiasm. Hmm. He, yes, now we are going to treat obesity was in the minds, but definitely didn't went that well. Uh, our chancellor, sir, uh, whom we fondly refer to as Vijay Patil, sir. Yeah. Uh, he has been a role model to me. Now, you know, uh, how to keep a vision mm -hmm. and how to pursue that vision and achieve bigger and bigger goals in life. A source of my inspiration where I thought ki there is something field beyond medicine as well because we were just knowing about the medical field. Hello friends, welcome to this podcast and today as my first podcast, I have with me a very illustrious and enterprising guest, Dr. Ketan Pakle. He has been my student and uh, uh, I have seen his career grow and grow and grow. He has done MBBS MD, MD in medicine and after that for last few years uh, he is working in the field of endocrinology and obesity. Uh, he specializes in the uh, endoscopic bariatric procedures. So uh, I welcome you Dr. Ketan and uh, how are you feeling? <laughs> Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much, first of all, inviting me to the first podcast of yours. Uh, you have been a source of inspiration for many of people, many of the students like me. And uh, since this many years and more than a decade, uh, I have been seeing you giving the talks. People are listening. It's my fortunate today that I'm sitting next to you and giving and, right. you know, having a Chai pe charcha, I can say. <laughs> yes. So thank you so much for inviting me. And okay. uh, it's I am sure this podcast would be really happening the way you always give the talks. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> my pleasure. My pleasure, Dr. Ketan. Uh, let's start from the beginning. I know you have a medical background. But uh, uh, were you really interested from the beginning in the field of medicine? And how uh, eventually uh, you came here and uh, yeah, your journey through... Uh, the field of medicine. Okay, so, so the first question itself was a googly question and a tough question, I feel. <laughs> <laughs> because because uh, uh, I have been in the family where a family member who is always surrounded by the complaints and surrounded by complaints of the patients, I can say. And he is always busy uh, giving the solutions to them and he's my father who is also a doctor. So I have been born and brought up in the doctor's family because my family was from the medical background. My mom is a doctor, my cousins are doctors. And uh, I've grown up that key. It was just like a movie of three idiots. Ye bar, ye, ye, ye doctor ban gaya, doctor aa gaya. So it was similar kind of situation. But yes, uh, after my 10th standard uh, neighbor next door, who was my friend, used to come in a uniform. Uh, where uh, he doctor's was, uniform you mean no I, I i'll come to that so okay. he was not in the doctor's uniform but mm. he used to come in a uniform mm. uh, where uh, he was being admired and people were looking when he used to walk in the society complexes in that uniform because he was a pilot oh yeah and uh, he was been uh, a source of my inspiration where i thought ki there is something field beyond medicine as well because we were just knowing about the medical field till then so he was into aviation industry, he was a pilot, a captain, and uh, uh, that really admired me. Like I felt, no, I have to be a pilot. But as I said, the family background was from medical point of view. I ultimately uh, opted and got into the field and the stream of medicine. And that's my MBBS journey started. And you were the first person I can who, say. Who you met, yeah, as a, teacher. <laughs> as a yes. teacher, you were the first person I met. And I guess that was the time where I was still in the Delmia. Oh, shit, whether I'm in the right field or not. But I guess teachers like you and you were there. I was so comfortable that I finished my first year in the first go. And then the confidence built up in the medicine field. Yeah, right. But uh, uh, rather Your early days in DY party. Uh, yeah, I guess I remember talking to you only okay. and crying <laughs> on your shoulders. Okay. <laughs> uh, so I, this earlier days in Diva Patil was amazing. I guess uh, we were the batch of uh, 2007 when yeah. we came to you and uh, thanks to Diva Patil because, uh, because of that uh, university, I have met so many people and I'm sitting today in front of everyone and giving this interview for the podcast is uh, 
I guess the major chunk and the credit goes to that uh, university and the absolutely. founders and the president of uh, Deva Patil University. Absolutely, Patil, absolutely. Yeah. You are uh, you have been associated since 2007. Yeah, my association date back to 1995 when I took first <laughs> lecture in Deva Patil, and I tell you, uh, our chancellor sir, uh, whom we fondly refer to as Vijay Patil sir, yeah, uh, he has been a role model to me. Now you know uh, how to keep a vision. Mm-hmm. and how to pursue that vision and achieve bigger and bigger goals in life i have always followed him for that and you know it's like a uh, best sim lab dy patil school of medicine mm-hmm. B- best stadium dy patil uh, navi mumbai so you know he has uh, made this institute grow yeah. by yeah. leaps and bounds one mm-hmm. more thing best yes. teachers from dy patil university <laughs> <laughs> okay <laughs> okay all right um I take it with all the humility. <laughs> right, uh, we mean it, sir, and definitely yes. Uh, there was a lot of uh, understanding and learning beyond medicine, and uh, it was not uh, restricted just to the medicine. Then uh, taking further, as I was giving the uh, told about a pilot and the aviation thing. Uh, so the journey started from there, and my passion was for flying. So post MD uh, medicine, when I became uh, my post graduation was done, I. continued my passion with the aviation field and uh, now i am a aviation medical examiner for uh, government of india and government of us as wait, well wait 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 let's uh, <laughs> let's not uh, go ahead of ourselves let's uh, take the things uh, slowly slowly okay uh, i want to know as you were finishing your uh, mbbs the mm. under graduation was your uh, goal for md medicine already decided or it was just uh, any branch and you will succeed what was that that confidence <laughs> i guess uh, passing mbbs only was the goal initially okay. <laughs> <laughs> and i never thought of doing post graduation because uh, i have been engaged as we were talking about diva patil university i was been engaged with a lot of extra curricular activities in that and i was uh, managing with from the medical point of view and was completely into the medical aspects to manage the diva patil stadium yes i i, so, I saw <laughs> you running around uh, in those yes, yes. Yes, yes so so i was more reclining towards being a, a administrator i feel and i thought my i will pursue my career into administration point, point of view but as we finished uh, our internship my reclination towards the uh medicine was a lot that time and i opted for medicine field post that because very wise people and teachers like you said ki that would be a part of your journey managing the administration but medicine is the uh, base of your yes, yeah yes. the base of your uh, career and the future so you can't uh, opt it out you can't right, keep it in right, option right. so yes i slowly went towards the medicine field and later on i started enjoying it yeah. yes yes which is what happens to <laughs> most of the med- uh, students in medicine <laughs> that uh, there is certain certain uncertainty yeah, as yeah. to what they are going to select and what they are going to finally pursue yeah uh, so it happened and then you joined the md medicine yeah uh, in the same hospital in the uh, same hospital yes, yeah, yeah right so uh, how was it for 3 years uh, good i feel it was a roller coaster and uh, i felt that uh, uh, it was it's not uh, the ju- it's not about the destination as we all say it was a journey and it was a ride of roller coaster there were ups and downs because uh, uh, most of our students and my juniors my whom i have even i have taught uh, it was uh, when you were giving the wisdom we were you were giving us wise decision how to take that we learned from that and we started passing to our stu- students our juniors and i guess in that journey when we learn and teach uh, the 3 years passed you know and we became a post graduate uh, in md medicine but yes it was a, a, a lot of learnings i can say uh, from medicine point of view and apart from medicine also we learned a lot of things uh, how to deal with people how to deal with outsiders how to deal with your friends colleagues teachers uh, it was a good learning experience i can say absolutely <laughs> now coming to your uh, present uh, passion yeah. and present uh, career option as uh, we can say uh, it's about the endocrinology so how did you decide that uh, okay after md medicine now endocrinology and uh, obesity and uh, bariatric uh, yeah. field is going to be your final destination was there any incident that might have happened or uh, was that uh, 
an arbitrary decision uh-huh. or what i mean what yeah. made you make that decision uh i feel uh, it was a eureka moment so like um, i finished my md medicine and uh, i started my as i said my families from the medical medicine field so my clinic was ready of course by that time and oh yes a new doctor is here and i was welcome with a good clinic and i was started seeing my patients but uh, within 3 4 days or uh, 3 4 days or a week times i was like is this going to be my life throughout and mm. i was i was like you know i can't uh, take this and just keep seeing the patient treating me keep seeing the patient treating me of course the patients were happy uh, because they were also knowing me since long time and uh, Uh, results were good definitely but uh, that was not giving me i can say the kick okay. uh, yeah uh, that was not giving me the happiness or uh, you know some uh, r- adrenaline rush, rush towards my body yeah. like i oh wow yes i have done something no it was not happening that way so so in that scenario uh, uh, i was talking to my one of my friend we were sitting pool side and i was like hey, dude i don't know what to do i have become md but i still feel i don't know what to do further i was like hey, boss everyone strive to get this much degree yes. and you are still uh, waiting to do you are asking something more and i said ki no i don't know yeah means i'm not really uh, getting that hype of working this way so on that discussion over the night at around 2 am pool side we were talking and uh, i spoke to him i said I, we have done the thesis work we had md uh, thesis when we do in the course of 3 years and in that time uh, he said then good then you have done this way then it is about diabetes and all i said ki yes we can practice diabetes but there are so many diabetologists who are already working it what stand me different i wanted that you know kick, kick <laughs> so yes. i was waiting for that kick and that in that scenario i explained him about my thesis topic i thank my guide uh, dr archana bhate because uh, because of her i guess i got that uh, th- thesis topic of metabolic syndrome oh yeah now there comes the starting point, <laughs> starting point. of point. your yes. yes yes so this metabolic syndrome was my uh, thesis topic and i told ki i had conducted i had conducted a study of this many patient during my md medicine and i have done this thesis which was metabolic syndrome so just taking to the viewers what metabolic syndrome is about uh, it is about obesity it is about diabetes uh, your cholesterol cholesterol lipid profiles is hdl and triglycerides and hypertensions so five things were there in this criteria any three are present in a patient we called it as metabolic syndrome of course we don't keep it as a diagnosed term but yes uh, it is a syndrome where all these major diseases are there we call it as metabolic syndrome and so metabolic we- syndrome is not a diagnosis per yeah, se per as se. they write it on the prescription, prescription pad yeah. but Yes, it's a collection of a few disorders, maybe yes, related yes. to the metabolic, metabolic. Uh, health of the body. Yes. Okay. And when we uh, found the found that out, you are a metabolic syndrome patient. The quality of the life gets hampered. The quality of life you are living definitely gets hampered. And this is what my thesis topic was about. And during that night, we was like, hey, if you want to do something, why don't you come up with a metabolic syndrome clinic only? Okay, <laughs> and that's how the term metabol, the clinic's name came with the metabol, metabol. and metabolic syndrome lifestyle clinic for metabolic syndrome was into the picture at around two to three a.m. at night pool side. Okay, so that was definitely a eureka moment, and uh, with this, then I started hunting. uh what to learn further because sugars were we were managing during the md course uh, cholesterol and hypertension we were managing something was about obesity where we were untouched and this was something where no not many of them were knowing how obesity it is whether it is a disease whether what how to treat that obesity wherever we see we see celebrities or any fit fitness freak person he is going to gym and is building the body he is having less carbs and less food yeah, we call them he is a fit person but it was more beyond that when i started understanding so i did my fellowship into obesity medicine from pune i got a opportunity to go to london and understand the fellowship into training into and uh, obesity medicine endocrine and i got exposed to a wholesome building who was 
completely uh, focused on treating obesity only so that time i realized ki this is altogether a different subject and yes. it is not just uh, treating ki you lose weight have less carbs and have uh, go for exercise as you lose weight uh, i feel it is more beyond that and it's a serious issue and uh, obesity is now i guess uh, mother of all the diseases and uh, yeah. uh, the paradigm shift of treating even uh, diabetes has been shifted uh, and not only sugar control or glucose centric approach it is a holistic approach and adipose tissues need to be in control to take control of your sugars or your cholesterols and uh, your blood pressure so i feel obesity is the mother of all diseases that's how i started understanding from that phase of life okay coming back Just, uh, yeah okay yeah so yeah, go ahead so coming coming back to the clinic and again starting with a new uh, jacket new enthusiasm hmm. ki yes now we are going to treat obesity was in the minds but definitely didn't went that well <laughs> so so we have to go for certain things which was beyond that because nowadays we don't people like uh, do not have much of patience so they wanted quicker results how to go further with it so that's how uh, endoscopic uh, bariatric came to the mind and i took training for it and now i am into endoscopic bariatric procedures like uh, intragastric ballooning i got recently trained for endoscopic sleeve gastroplasty and this gave a good better results and quicker results which is a procedure and not a surgery and uh, people started losing with uh, those things so it's, it gave me the kick of a patient who is losing 25 kg 30 kg 35 kg in a span of one year and that made me the visual appearance ki yes this is something different here yeah. okay just uh, diverting a little bit yeah um a politician i remember uh, a few years ago mm-hmm. went through the bariatric surgery of of this kind and then later it was in the all over in the news that uh, it was almost life threatening for him yeah uh that politician is no more uh, not uh, not anymore with us yeah but uh, are these procedures safe really and uh, what do you think might have gone wrong or or uh, uh these things are basically the bariatric surgeries or say bariatric procedures so surgeries are different and procedures what endoscopic are done are different of course when anesthetic part comes into the picture the uh, definitely the chances of uh, a uh, high risk already comes into the picture and when they are already super obese all things gets complicated to you know train those things uh, or take control of their entire parameters so uh, there are always risks yes. in all the procedures and all the surgeries uh, we opt for bariatric procedures for mild to moderate obesity uh, depending upon the patient's criteria of course uh, not everyone can go for the procedures we select the ideal candidates for it if somebody is morbid obese whose bmi is beyond 40 45 we ask them to go for bariatric surgeries uh, that could be the better results for them but many a times they do not get uh, anesthetic fitness so they are not fit for surgery then what to do so in that zone uh, we go for intragastric ballooning where it fills the gap between the surgery and the procedure where they lose some amount of weight and then they go for the surgeries in this scenario also when they are not fit for surgery but the only option to save their life is surgery with the bariatric yes. surgery okay so this type of situation arises many a times and sometimes uh, mishaps happens uh, but uh, yeah that is a part of the medical yes, profession yes, yeah yes. but we try to give the best uh, results to maximum patients where uh, where they lose the weight we have seen patient going off Uh, diabetic medicines they are going off insulins we have seen their cholesterol medications goes down blood pressure medications goes down many young females of pcod is we call it as polycystic ovarian disease or syndrome that has been taken care of so uh, this changes and happiness the quality of life when they get control the happiness what we see and the small uh, uh, you know small incidences when they come back and share with us itself gives us the happiness of you, what we are doing here okay so uh, so let me uh, take it uh, into account uh, your journey yeah huh? uh, from mbbs to md medicine to endocrinology then diabetology and finally the niche your yeah. niche or your calling card is that can i call you a bariatrician and metabolic syndrome specialist yeah that could be fine we call now as been term uh, we uh, people started saying that the physicians are new here so it has been bariatric and metabolic physician 
specialty okay. into endoscopic bariatrics okay um from the common man's perspective uh, how costly these procedures are can a common man afford it yeah definitely why not i uh, it's not that costly uh, where you you can't spend any amount in that of course there are a lot of options available in this uh, we go for many people go for emi basis of course this is not in uh, insurance covered uh, uh, procedure yet it's not it's, it's not, not yet bariatric okay. surgeries where they are life threatening uh, that time the insurance is been covered uh, okay. but again that goes very costly and these are not that costly a common man can definitely opt i rather say and uh, tell people or my patients it is not uh, you are not uh, you know spending the money i say you are investing the money yeah. with this because your lifestyle is been uh, taken care of your lifestyle modification occurs where you are switching off medicines which you have been taking for a long time so indirect yeah. way you are saving a lot of money which would be you will be end up spending in the future so right. i call it as an investment in the spend, spending yes, yeah. yes i told you already <laughs> that he is a very enterprising person um and of course a good physician uh, needless to mention that uh, so uh, when exactly do you advise the patients to go for uh, an endoscopic procedure i mean uh, i'm sure there must be patients who have tried everything else and they have come to you or there may be patients who have straight away approached you that i don't want to uh, go off my uh, diet and all that i don't want to perform any exercise just uh, perform this procedure and uh, yeah. shed me off 55 uh, to, uh, 25 kgs yeah so we have lot of patients who come across in walking as well ki oh this is good let's do it you take this much of money you do this much let me go but i want to drink mm. i want to eat mm. i don't ask me to do any exercises mm. but you do the procedure i want to lose the weight so let me tell you sir and let me tell the viewers and the friends uh, we do the procedures or the bariatric surgeons do the procedures the surgeries most of the things comes to the lifestyle changes when the person adopts to it and when there is lifestyle modification which occurs in part of diet in part of exercises and their uh, counseling part with the attitude of living the life towards the life changes then these results are awesome the yeah. results are amazing but if you are not able to modify even a bit and expecting the surgeries and the procedures will take care of your body then it is less likely so you go any part of the world and uh, you get these things done we have patients uh, who have been operated in us we have patient operated in uk coming back to india and then uh, they say ki we are regaining the weight then after evaluation we find out their lifestyle is been the same or more bad because they feel we have done the surgery ah, so we have done we the procedure not free to yes. do anything yeah. so i guess that is the myth and that attitude needs to be changed that is what we are working in our lifestyle clinic which is a metabol and we are trying to train the patients from the perspective of attitude towards the life when it changes definitely this procedures or any type of surgery if not done also can be changed and they can lose weight without in a holistic way yes, yes yes as a common man or maybe even as a doctor uh, people only are aware of liposuction yeah. maybe yeah that's one procedure yeah. which is uh, fairly commonly known yeah so, so let is me is it a yeah. uh, substitute for that or is it a supplementary to that or i about? guess uh, it's so amazing to give a uh, here today being interviewed by you vivek sir on this podcast because you are asking so relevant questions which everyone has today so uh, liposuction is something different where your uh, superficial fat has been taken care of where it is a cosmetic surgery where you are carving or your curves comes to a some place where you see oh you are looking beautiful today just uh, aesthetically it will look yeah, good yes but it but may not change your body metabolism from the right? inside right so metabolism changes and the bariatric point of view where you are metabolism where metabolic diseases to be taken care of is something what we are doing whereas liposuction is a aesthetic point what you have said so right so right. it's completely okay. different yeah okay so um, and uh, how uh, i mean this course or these fellowships um are they uh, available in india or uh, i mean uh, formal training in this bariatric yeah. uh, procedures 
is it available in uh, india there are availabilities of course i was very first few person who among the few of them who started getting trained into this but yeah there are certain universities certain hospitals who are having uh, major cases of bariatric surgery they give formal trainings into this and as i was going through this journey you opted me today to give this uh, interview and uh, what i'm saying i traveled here and lot many places to understand this uh, we have come up with a association of metabolic physician association uh, where we have come out with our uh, basic medicine introductory modules to metabolic medicine and which is available on internet now and it has been gone across more than 2500 3000 doctors pan india level where uh, we have certain people like minded people who are working into metabolic medicine and we have created our module so people get aware with it so they can refer okay. to that uh, uh, articles and refer those materials to study and understand what exactly metabolic medicine is about okay uh as you <laughs> might have noticed uh, dr ketan pakle is a uh, of course he is a tremendous physician tremendous doctor and a very very enterprising person uh i i i really feel thankful that dr ketan pakle has come here uh, on this podcast my first ever podcast uh and uh, all the relevant information related to dr ketan uh, is available uh, on my channel so you can refer to that uh, this this goes to the patients this goes to all the physicians all the surgeons uh for the referral uh, of such patients uh, uh, the obesity and even metabolic syndromes and endocrine disorders uh thank you it was pleasure talking to you and we got many new insights into uh, this field which is still growing i think uh, in india so uh, you will have a path breaking journey i'm sure as thank a pioneer you. in this field thank you doctor thanks thanks a lot thank you so much sir for inviting me once again and uh, giving me a chance to come in front of your viewers i'm sure you have so many uh, students who follow you on uh, vivek sir's physiology which is a amazing uh, <laughs> teaching platform and learning platform for people like us who are still trying to understand the physiology <laughs> and <laughs> and that is amazing i'm sure people will understand on these things and i i want to uh, give one message to all our viewers sure. here because uh, i i want to say that ki as you have been source of inspiration for me and i become and you become source of inspirations for others we need to think something out of the box and uh, see what is the need of an hour and accordingly opt for those things and you can grow in that i feel yeah sure so thank, thank you, you so Dr. much sir thank, thank you thank you thanks bye bye